Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name is Luke Payson. Welcome back to all of you who are already subscribers to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber already, please subscribe so you can say, see more great interviews like the next one coming up right now. Welcome to the show, Danielle Wynn, who's about ready, under a month away, for fighting for 247 Fighting Championships. Brawl in the Berg, 19 on December 16th. Danielle, welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? It's always great. I'm doing very well. And it's always great having a first time guest of the show on the show. So thanks for taking time out of your busy training uh, to get on MMA Fan Guest for the first time. You are going to be matched up against Brittany Bickert at uh, Braunenberg 19. What brought this fight to you and how's it been going training for it so far? Uh, actually, the promoter came to me a while ago about a fight, but it just it, you know it didn't work out. It was with somebody else, and then it came to me again, and I was like, you know what? I yeah, the date works for me. I can do this. This will work. <laughs> there you go. You're available. Why not do it? Where 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 are you based out of? Like, where's your hometown? What what gym is your main uh training gym? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and it's ATT Team Lima, which is actually North Atlanta. Okay. That's where I live now, but I'm actually from, like, I guess, Mid-Atlanta. Atlanta's huge. Okay. But gotcha. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. I know it's huge. I didn't realize it was so big that you've got different regions of it. Well, Pittsburgh is much more condensed. It's It's got a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of sports teams and stuff, but it's a fairly small city as far as that goes. Uh, well, that's very exciting. What got you into, I know you've been a pro for a while. You were an amateur before that. Uh, you've been a fighter uh, for quite a while. What got you into training MMA in the first place? Actually, I started out as as um, just working out because I was in college. And, you know, the freshman 15 or freshman 10, whatever they want to call it, where you gain 10 pounds. I was like, no, no, I don't want to do all this. <laughs> so, uh I had a friend who was a kickboxer and she's like, you should do this. I mean, you can only do a couple days a week. It's fine. You know, you don't have to go into combat if you don't want to. It's just a workout. I'm like, okay, cool. So I started doing that. I enjoyed it. So then I started competing and then I did my first um, tournament, which I fought two days or two times in one day. Hmm. And that's kind of the end of it. I was just like, you know, let's continue with this. <laughs> and you clearly have continued with it now for a while, which is, which is wonderful. What do you like the most about MMA, the training that you're doing now? Because obviously you like the kickboxing, you fell in love with it back in college, you've been doing it for a while. So what what keeps it fresh and exciting for you now? I like the fact that you can use everything. I mean, use your, your fists, your legs, your knees, your elbows. I mean, pretty much everything. Whereas kickboxing, it's, you know, it's a little limited, but I mean, it's still, it's still a fight. It's still, I think it's still a valid sport and everything. And I, I still enjoy that. But I just like MMA because you can just do everything. Sure. That, that, I think that has been the real attraction for MMA. Of course, jiu-jitsu, you know, came in with the Gracies and was dominant. But then, you know, it can't just be jiu-jitsu. You also have to have the striking game, the grappling game, all types of aspects of it, which is really exciting. Uh, for you, it sounds like you're more of the kickboxing Muay Thai style in MMA. Um, and... What is your experience with like grappling and jujitsu? Is that a big part of your game or something that you do when you have to? Uh, I actually, people have told me that I should use my grappling more. I, I try to do grappling tournaments. However, it's just those Saturday. It's usually like on a Saturday and it's all day. I've made my work schedule out where I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off and I can't spend all day like, in one single spot because my job actually less gives me the freedom to do what I want to do. So it's great when I do MMA or boxing or kickboxing, I know it's going to be this date around this time. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. It's not going to be, well, I might get a, a, you know, I might get some time to do something. Cause right. that happened to me actually one time with uh, one of the jujitsu organizations. I was there all day and they're like, oh, well, you were the, I had, I had a buy, I guess they call it. Sure. And uh, yeah, because, you know, it was like an even amount of people. And then by the time it got to me, it was like, oh, well, the other two girls, you know, called out. It's over with. You win. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I just, I just can't spend the time because my job is actually really good at letting me get away. That's why I'm able to do things right now sure. and, and the freedom I have. And it, you know. 
401k is nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it is, it is great. And that's a big part of the, the fighters I interview on, on here is it, it's, there's a small percentage of MMA fighters or fighters in general that, that are full-time a fighter because oftentimes you're balancing. I think it's great that you found a, a job, like you said, with benefits that, that gives you the opportunity to be flexible. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is all you really need for most of the fight trips and most of the fights you're doing. And that makes sense. Some people really love the jiu-jitsu tournaments where they're there all day. It's sort of reminiscent of wrestling tournaments where they go on forever. Right. Um, but I think it also makes sense when when you do a fight, whether it's boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, or MMA, you're, that's guaranteed because that opponent is one-on-one that fight will happen unless, of course, something unexpected. So for you, have you been up to Pittsburgh before? I know you haven't fought for 247 fighting championships before. What, what, what's exciting? Before we get to the fight itself, what's exciting about this trip from Atlanta up to the Pittsburgh area in December for you? Besides the beautiful cold weather, of course. <laughs> yeah, my parents were like, you know, it's going to be snowing possibly. <laughs> but no, it's just, uh, I always travel. I've never actually fought. I never fought as a pro in Atlanta. We have uh, very few females here. Well, well we have females. I just, I know them, yeah. you know, so it's kind of like, uh, you know, we can't do this. <laughs> Those are teammates. I'm sure there's a, little, a couple of them. So um, it's more of the traveling aspect and just, I mean, the unknown, I guess, is kind of cool, too, I have to admit. Yeah. So. Well, and since all of your pro fights and you've had many of them have been outside the Atlanta area, it's kind of part of the excitement of being able to travel and see new places. And that's pretty that's pretty fantastic. Now, let's get to the fight itself. Uh, Brittany Bickert mm -hmm. has been somebody that I've seen at the amateur level. Obviously, this is her debut. You're an experienced uh, pro. I, I know she's excited for this opportunity because it took her a while about a year since her last amateur fight to get a fight worked out because as you pointed out there's not as many options among female fighters and so what's that experience been like to you why say yes to this fight and then give me your thoughts on Brittany as an opponent uh, the same thing it's just it's hard to find opponents I totally get it so I try to be as a game as I can be and just go into it and I mean I've gone into f some fights I probably shouldn't have but I still did anyway and as far as her as an opponent, I mean, I think it'd be a good fight. I think it'd be a good brawl. Like I noticed, she was more of a she did a lot of uh, featherweight, one forty five. But uh, I think I'm thinking she's wanting to go down, and I'm here for it because <laughs> I'm never going up to one forty five ever again. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. So you're very much a one thirty five bantamweight. That that's where you want to be. Gotcha. Yeah, one one thirty five and possibly one twenty five if the timing was right, but I never seem to get the timing right with that, Got so it. I don't I don't agree to that because it's not a good idea because sure. I don't have the right time frame and you know. Sure, of course, of course, right. and 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 you just brought up a point, and that that happens on the guy side of MMA, you know, being asked to jump weight classes, but not quite as much because among females, not only do you have to get uh, an opponent who's willing to fight on a certain date and a certain card, but then also at a certain weight, which can be tricky. And it sounds like you've taken fights up at featherweight that you now aren't going to do again. So, you know, that's part of the learning. That's part of the learning process for sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that Brittany had at least one or two Muay Thai fights. So it's kind of cool that you guys both have like a kickboxing Muay Thai background to some degree, of course, in MMA, it's whatever works in the cage at the time, and there can be a wide range of things, which is pretty exciting. You you said you look at this as an exciting fight. I certainly agree with you. I think uh, for two four seven having three female fighters, you're the 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 one pro fight, but there's two amateurs. I think one's an advanced amateur and one's a regular amateur, which is also no, both of them are advanced amateurs. So two advanced amateurs which is a, a bigger rule set and then of course pro so uh what do you think about that have you fought on cards i, I know there's the occasional all-female card which is super rare but really fun have you fought on cards with other females and what do you think is going to make this fight exciting with you and Brittany? actually um i really haven't i'm usually the only female on the card or me and my opponent right. obviously but um yeah i usually it's usually an all-male card 
in fact, I've had to literally share like bathrooms with men, and it's just like, oh, this is, this is fine. <laughs> this is okay. They put you in the blue corner or red corner and say, good enough, right? They're just like, you're in the corner of blue or red, whatever uh, risk color you're in, right? Yeah. Right, right. Uh, but except for some of the, the game bread ones I did, mm. they actually put me in my own because uh, I was a co main event in two of their fights. Mm. So, you know, that was cool. And the one in Mexico and then the one with Pro Gonzalez. I had my own, like I had my own room and own like everything. That that was nice. But the others, you know, I've been in the locker room with men, and you know, it's it's fine. Um, but it's nice to have you know two other females on the card or two others in my not corner, corner but you know, right, right. In yeah, the locker room. Corner, you're right because we call it the red corner and the blue corner, but technically more like locker room warm up type area. Yeah, that is that is really special. Um, it, it's cool that you got to fight for the great game bread organization a couple times. Obviously, that's uh, that's pretty well known because of his connection to the UFC. Also, cool. What was it like? I didn't didn't put together. You had fought in Mexico. So what was it like fighting internationally? Uh, what, what's that experience like for you? Oh, that was a lot of fun. I had a really good time. It was just uh, it, so they got us there on on like Tuesday. So I had like all week to spend in California and Mexico. We spent a day in California, then the rest of the time in Mexico. And then just the weigh-ins was cool. I just didn't realize the, the like how out of breath I would be. Dude, I, I guess oh. it maybe was the elevation or, you know, all that. But it was a very good experience. And I got in real good with, you know, Game Bread and Dean Tool and that promotion. And they invited me back a few other times. and. They're actually really stand-up guys, and so I've I've learned what to look for in promotions, and I've learned like what to like. Oh, maybe this one's not such a great one to go to, uh, you know. And I know to ask the right questions, like basically just from from that, because they're my first they're my first amb- or pro fight. Excuse me. Okay, sure. Well, that makes a lot of sense, and that's part of the process of your career now Brittany's pro career anybody's pro career is there is a, an adjustment between amateur not only to the rule set but also to kind of the fact that you're getting paid to do this now there's a little bit more on 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 the line on stake hopefully 247 uh as far as far as Ryan Middleton the the owner Jim Mooney the matchmaker and the GM Hunter Homestack hopefully the whole situation is very good for you I, I know they they like having a repu- uh reputation of being a good uh, a good promoter for the fighters because then that makes better fights and people come back and those type of things. So hopefully it's a great overall experience for you. Uh, obviously you've already mentioned that you, that you have a full-time job, but clearly fighting is your passion. It's something you've been doing for a while. Who's in your, who, who are your sponsors? Who are people that support you in, in this juggling act between your job and your passion of MMA? Because I know that's a big part of any fighter, particularly amateurs and developing pros. I don't think we can express enough how big sponsorships are at that level. So go ahead and give shout outs to the people you need to. Well, yeah, well, actually my job is part-time, but they pay enough to where I can live my life style still and then of course my my corner guy and my boyfriends um knockout canada fighter alias they do a lot punch gunk has done things for me um brawl the babes they've interviewed me a few times and you know i just have like so many people that were just so willing to as when mission mission oh my gosh (laughs) but so many people just are in my corner. My parents, you know, they they take care of me as well. So it's just a really good experience. And back to my job, they're easy to deal with. And, you know, having benefits and insurance and everything like that, you know, I, I'm pretty okay to pursue what I want. And then I can go back to my job later, even if I break a hand or something, which I was worried about in Game Bread a little oh. bit. Because <laughs> I was buried up MMA. And I was like, oh, well, oh. you know. I already warned them, hey, <laughs> I might be out for a little while, but that turned out really well. So, yeah, that, that's pretty much what I've got going on. And then my friend Gary, he's he's really good at taking care of me and taking care of fights and everything. But, yeah, I have so many awesome people in my corner. It's 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 a blessing, really. Yeah, that is incredible. That's a great list of, of sponsorships and obviously family support, friend support. That makes a big difference. 
for those that will be watching this from the Atlanta area, um, obviously it's a great shout out to get the pay-per-view and make sure Danielle gets the credit or download the app. 247 is really cool. They, they have an actual app, the 247 Live app that you can download. Some of the content is free. The fights aren't. You have to get a subscription or the pay-per-view, but they do have some content that is part of the app for free. So it's really cool to have a local promotion, have their own app, as opposed to trying to stream it someplace else. That's something that Ryan Milton really is proud of, and it, it's quite cool. So hopefully you get some uh, support from the pay-per-view side of things. Uh, because that's always exciting as well. And it's kind of cool to be able to be fighting in Pittsburgh, but be able to have some support from back in Atlanta. So very yeah, nice. I got to thank my teammates, of course, too. And the Limas, Douglas and Diego Lima. I got to thank them and Brantley, my coaches. And there's so many people. <laughs> and of course, the standard disclaimer, if Danielle hasn't mentioned you by name, it doesn't mean that she doesn't care about you. And she's very grateful yeah. for you. It could be hard because uh, I love to give fighters the opportunity to give shout outs and, and thank yous, but sometimes they, you know, they're not prepared. You didn't have a list written out. So obviously I appreciate you saying what came to your mind. And it's a big part of this, of this whole situation for you to have these, these supporters. Um, so I appreciate you coming on MMA Fancast for the first time. It's always fun for me. Um, I try to interview, I, I have a list and I try to make sure I get to the out of towners as well, because it's super easy for me to interview just the Pittsburgh people, but I want to give the opportunity to interview you and, and all the other people that are coming because without that, there wouldn't be a card. There always has to be the, the team coming in uh, to, you know, to make the fight um, exciting. So I really appreciate you taking time. Can't wait to see you and everybody else. Braun the Berg 19, December 16th at the Memorial Convention Center for, for 247 Fighting Championships. You've been listening to Luke Payson with MMA Fancast and first time guest on the show, professional MMA fighter, Danielle Wynn. Thanks so much for taking time out. Have a great day. Oh, and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> this is the night before Thanksgiving. Yeah, and I didn't even think it was going to me. So a big thanks to you for coming on. Uh, Thanksgiving Eve day, as my brother likes to say. So Thanksgiving <laughs> Eve day. So happy Thanksgiving to you and all the people that will be watching this on MMA Fancast. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. You got it. And a blessed Thanksgiving to everybody, you and your family. Take care.